the Glass Cannon Network. Welcome back, everybody, to Get in the Trunk. Happy Tuesday night. Oh, baby, do we have a show lined up for you tonight. It is going to be something special. Those of you tuning in live can already see that Troy has come in cosplay for the show <laughs> open. He is uh, he's going method tonight, folks. Roger, Roger, how was your week, buddy? Roger's very sick. <laughs> uh, that air blowing was him blowing out uh, his cigarette smoke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's literally crushed it a beer. Guys, you're in for a very unique sesh tonight that I'm extremely excited about, even beyond Troy's method acting. Skid, can you guess why? Uh, there's some cool coming up in the story. Well, that, yeah. I mean, the story is about to go out of control, but uh, I'm super excited because I'm in Oklahoma. I'm back in Oklahoma. Those of you that are watching live can see uh, my background here. And as we were gearing up to do this, I haven't recorded anything else since I've been here. And I'm only recording this while I'm here. Uh, and by this, I mean get in the trunk. Uh it brings back some special memories because this is where I was sitting when we started the real season one of Get in the Trunk, the, the last equation. When we really launched into our first longer operation, it was right in this room. Uh, I was sitting here where we started SideQuest Side Sesh. Not started, but like the heart of the first season of SideQuest Side Sesh was all here. Uh, well, uh, the uh, bust, not busted mufflers. What's the other one? The tin whistles all started when I was right here at the, in this room. And so there's just so many good vibes for me in here of some of the, the best stuff that we put out there. Uh, so I'm on the road. Skid, you're on the road. Look, where are you? I am. I'm in Knoxville. I'm at Samantha's place. As you can see by her actually decorated wall that she has. <laughs> that's a great, I was thinking, yeah. that's a great wall. I was in my head. I'm like, I gotta yeah. tell Skid. I like the art that he's put on his wall. Yeah. But never mind. Tell Samantha. Literally yeah, thinking she that. actually has a sense of aesthetics, uh, which I lack. <laughs> so it's uh, very, very nice background. I, uh, I'm, I drove out here uh, again. I chose to drive again, largely because of the, the uh, prices of airfare. But I, uh, I also, I also like a good road trip. Uh, do you like a good road trip, Sid? Like a good long time in the car? Uh, how long are we talking? There's a. I feel like <laughs> we're there's talking a... twelve plus hours. <laughs> road um, one go? <laughs> no, I think no. It doesn't have to be one day, but like one way has to be I, twelve hours. I like road trips. I have no problem with driving. I personally like. I've driven to Ohio and back, and that's like a 12, 11 ish hour, mm -hmm. like to Cincinnati and back um, by myself. Oh, like, I don't mind. What were you mind. doing in Cincinnati? <sighs> Filming a movie. Oh, but, of course, the actor's uh, life, the movie <laughs> star's life. <laughs> but I stopped in Amish. I mean, I like, like Amish country is really beautiful. Uh, nothing else in Pennsylvania, not much to do there. But for a, I, for a second, I thought you said almond country. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> where's <laughs> almond country? I want to go to there. That's California. That is California. California, yeah. Uh, yeah I've right. driven through that as well, um, uh, through almond country, which is nothing but desert. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like a road trip because you get to decide where you're going to stop off. And especially if you're with a friend, then you kind of make that decision together. And it's like, should we stop off at this shitty highway rest stop? No, nah, <laughs> let's wait for the <laughs> next shitty highway rest stop. <laughs> well, those, con uh, those conversations. How many miles? to the next one 47 can we hold our p for 47 <laughs> miles i could do 30 miles i don't know what's like, what's it like driving with the kids though i mean that's a different experience it's great it's great it's now it's better they're six and four and they're uh, a little bit more chill and we do like oh well first of all i drive through the night which is the best uh, part for yeah. me because like they sleep through the night and i drive through the night and i just listen to time for chaos <laughs> it passes the hours by uh in the middle of the night and then uh during the daytime we just give them tablets 
We're like, here are tablets or coloring. You know, like you can give do them coloring. pills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we give them little like, tablets. They're called Keep drink quiet. Uh, what kind of, what kind of drugs Take you give two them? of these. Uh, right, it's good? a little Let yellow me. pill with a smiley face on it. <laughs> like, here you go, Joe. Uh, quit holding out. Yeah. Let's listen to some Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, we, we, it's, it's become easy for us. What about you, Francis? Have you ever done like the cross country drive? You seem like a cross country drive. Have you ever driven from New York to Hawaii? (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah actually uh, i have uh no but i've driven cross country i've driven from new york to la i knew it, I knew it. you're, you're yeah. a cross country oh, driving happened. kind of dude but i can I love, tell i'm a cross country driving crazy mother effort uh i love <laughs> i love driving cross country i drove um what did i do i took a random route because i had friends staying in random places but uh i went from new york to cleveland to chicago to denver and then to vegas and then to la Oh, wow. wow! By myself, yeah, it was a great Were you time. Lost? Me and uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Uh, there was a point in between Denver and Vegas where I was a little bit worried. I I didn't know what that was going on because I was going through the the mountains like pitch black night because I I left Denver in the morning and it was yeah, like I think cool. ten hours or something. So it was like pitch black as I'm coming up through the mountains coming down into the valley where Vegas is. And it was just like this big shining light from the Luxor hotel. And I was like, Oh, thank God I didn't get. (laughs) (laughs) That was the only indicator I had. I was just like, crap. This was before uh, Google maps and GPS kids. Just so you know, oh, the folded yeah. map in the back seat of the car. Oh, they were yeah. Reaching for. Oh, yeah. 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 It was a real uh, uh, like, you know, Magellan like trip, <laughs> like, like trip. I was literally <laughs> just out there feeling my way around the country. Um, it was great. And you, though. And you drove it. it solo. I did. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Wow. How long yeah. did it take? Like beginning to end? Uh, was it a week? Was it less than a week? I took a week because the uh, the way I was going, I, I had friends, like I said, in, in different cities, so I'd have to kind of go in weird directions. So it took me about four days. Yeah, it was like about a day to each location. And that last one from Denver to Vegas was like pushing it. I was and pushing then, it hard. <laughs> and then would you do a month in Vegas before LA? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I basically sold my car in Vegas, uh, played the slots, per- performed for about a residency, three weeks. Yeah, <laughs> I had a few shows. I was you did sands. that drive like three months before I did it. You did it in like November, yeah. and I did yeah. it in January or two months later. Yeah, the you, same you exact came right drive. behind me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but did you, you go to the same where cities, did you try? Right? Yeah, I moved. To, I drove cross country to move to LA as well. Basically, Francis and I were hanging out. We were, <laughs> we were best buddies, tearing up New York City with three bucks in our pocket. And uh, yeah, one time literally. we were just out all night, and I was like, I'm fucking moving to LA. Uh, and he was like, that sounds like a great idea. And then he just fucking <laughs> left and moved to LA. <laughs> Stole that idea. <laughs> nice idea, pal. Get yourself so wake up the next day, Francis? <laughs> Francis is gone. And I was like, yo, can I crash on your couch? So I I had this whole thing, and I, 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 I bought a car, and I drove out there with like, Literally just enough money to make it across country. And I did the drive <laughs> like true. three, three, almost three months, two, two to three months after Francis. And uh, yeah. I got there. I had no place to live. I'm like, I sleep in your couch. And after a week, he was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, you can sleep on my couch. I don't have a couch. But yeah. <laughs> no, I, you didn't. I, I didn't kick you out. I thought we no. had fun. Yeah, yeah, we had a good time. I mean, it was a, it was a, a halcyon days. We, it was a long time ago. 2007? Yeah. Seven, I think. Yeah. yeah. That was, Troy, have, yeah, you done any, seven? have you done any road trips with the kids? <laughs> um, any extended uh, car time with the family? You know, we do four or five hour drives all the time. Um, we're doing a a nine hour drive to the outer banks in August, which uh, we're going to split up over two days. Cause nine, when you see nine hours on Google maps, that means 12 hours. So like, we're going to just split yeah. it up over two days. I, I hate, I, I hate road trips because like I'm the type of guy I could sleep 11 hours and drive to con- the convenience store and fall asleep behind the wheel. Like I <laughs> get tired immediately when I start driving. I'm just like banging my head to try and stay awake. And my wife is like, what is wrong with you? We've been driving for 20 minutes. It, it makes me so tired. So that, that reason alone is why I, I can't stand road trips. That is exactly how I am on trains. The second I get on a train, 
after about six minutes, no matter what I'm doing, I'm reading, I'm watching something on my iPad. I'm just like, uh, uh, <laughs> like I cannot keep my eyes open. Something about that, like, that like gentle rocking motion. <laughs> I can't stay awake. Uh, what about you, Skit? Road trips? Yeah, you, you, I love road trips. Yeah. I don't like to drive usually because uh, I, I kind of don't drive very well anymore. I don't think I've ever seen you drive. I mean, I don't have a car. I haven't had a I car in it. like 25 years. So uh, no, That's a true New Yorker right yeah, there. I don't was, drive. I don't yeah. drive. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Sometimes I'll rent a car or whatever if I go out of town sometimes. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a strong driver. So, right over uh, before we hop into it, I see, Sid, you're getting your carbs, I guess, so that you have the energy for the show. Is it, What are you eating? Is that some pasta? Is that some I sauce? I thought that's... you weren't going to say anything. <laughs> no, nope. just some <laughs> easy no, no, macaroni right on screen. You're I'm curious on what your spot. energizing food is for the app. You, you bring know enough? what it is because you made fun of me before we started recording. <laughs> it's a delicious key lime pie. And when I have a little late night espresso or coffee i like to have a little sweet treat with it i'm a big like once i start drinking black coffee i'm like time to have a cookie um oh yeah it's yeah. quarter past also... 10 at night <laughs> what you're drink you're drinking coffee and eating a key lime pie <laughs> yeah not to mention i swear in the pre-show you held up an ipa are you drinking an ipa an espresso and eating well, a key lime pie <laughs> here's the thing it's you late just got off work. late i want i just got, got off work, work. One, I just got off work, so I'm like, time to have my little beer. But then it's also like, we gotta record, and I'm like, time to have a little coffee. And then I'm like, I need to be in a good mood for the recording, and that's where the key lime pie comes in. So it's all part, I'm a method actor too, and my method is to do a good job, and this is how I do it. <laughs> well, don't don't enjoy method. it, enjoy don't it while you can. Exactly. Because if I did that, I would be up at 6 a.m. on the toilet for an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> Chase the key lime pie with an IPM coffee at 10 15. Oh, oh, what is wrong with me? A key lime espresso IPM. Oh, 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 sweating. <laughs> oh, God. All right, I want to get into it because, as we said, it is late. It's a, it's a late night recording, and so we, we got to dig in. We got to get in. And. Uh, I suspect gauging everyone's state of mind that you guys could use a little recap. Uh, since, there's a lot going on in the, la in the last two eps alone. Just the sheer amount of reveals, of evidence, uh, of aw awesome shit that you guys have done and, and brought to, to the table to explore or get into has been uh, mind-boggling. And so I'm going to try to just cover some of it in a, uh, I don't know, a, a quick recap i guess a quote-unquote quick recap i hope to keep it quick i always shit on troy on the live shows for for making these long drawn out recaps but the reality is when you're sitting in the handler seat it really does feel like every single thing is so important and everything matters and you want everybody to dig in as much as they can so i'll, I'll try to do the abridged version it is currently thursday august 17th 1995 you guys have been at this for three days you started on tuesday you were digging into this apartment, uh, going through various pieces of evidence. And in the last day alone, uh, I would say some pretty major highlights. Uh, Roger Comstone found a backpack transmitter that seems to be an army issued uh, transmitter, maybe from as long ago as World War II. And when he put the phone to his ear, he heard not only some code reading in British, but then he heard himself. He heard his own voice saying, hey, Norma, I'm back. I'm back around. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be here. Very, very interesting. Passes his sand roll, doesn't tell anybody about it. Nobody knows about this backpack so far. And that's one of the only pieces of evidence that for me has not been cataloged and written down. Uh, you tell me if I have that wrong, Troy. Also, uh, as we as we go around, uh, Bobby wanted to look into a, a Pepto-Bismol bottle uh, that he found among a bunch. He got that sent off to the lab. He's supposed to get the results back on that today. Vicky Ricci found a United Airlines ticket that is supposedly from June 6th, 2015. Somebody named Michael Whitwer is flying from Vegas to Boston. 
doesn't make any sense. So she leaves it with Phil at her office, an expert in uh, paperwork like this, in, 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 uh, in, in, in tracking forgeries, etc. He's going to look into it, but he's supposed to get her results by the end of the day, and he leaves, suddenly not feeling well. Vicky is supposed to get these results today. Hopefully, Phil is back in the office, but Vicky is currently in the apartment, I believe, looking for evidence. You guys all went to a, a bar called The Patriot and uh, got into an alt- altercation there. Uh, Roger headbutted a frat boy uh, who uh, oh spilled a drink on Vicky after she bumped into him. The guy tried to fight Vicky, not tried to fight Vicky, but talk shit on Vicky. Roger got up and was like, not having it. Smashed the kid in the face, gave him a good bloody nose, and then got out of there. Went out with Norma. Norma tried to pass him some drugs at a nightclub-ish scene setting, and Roger said, no thanks, I don't like to mix my poisons, and then he got out of there. Norma, fuming. Christopher, Vicky's currently a husband. She's in the midst of divorce proceedings, but he asks her through a nicely written note, to blow off their meeting with the lawyers today on Thursday at 3 p.m. and meet him in the park at 3 p.m. to uh, play some chess like they used to play and blow off that meeting with the lawyers. Vicky seems like she's going to do that. Bobby uh, is also looking into the building management company, a company called Art Life. He is there now. He went there. He spoke to a woman. I don't think you got her name at the time. I'll give it to you now. It's Cynthia. You're speaking to Cynthia, who uh, runs the desk there at Art Life, the building management company. The biggest thing that you find out there is, well, there's three things. One, the receipt that you brought there was not generated by the building management company, and there is no apartment 10B. She doesn't know what the hell you're handing her. Two, Abigail Wright was not paying rent long before she went missing in June. Since March, her, her rent was unpaid. Three, and this is the last thing you found out, none of the tenants in the building have paid rent since June. Three months, they're all, they all have not been paid. One of the last things that we, oh, uh, Vicky had a dream. Vicky had a almost a lucid dream that she'd realized by the end she was dreaming and she could have a little bit of a control, but then she woke up. In that dream, she was sitting at her, as a guest at her own wedding. At her table was Abigail Wright with a man whose face Vicky never saw. His back was to her. He was holding a briefcase and he was speaking with Christopher. When she asked what his name was, Abigail's response was incomprehensible to her. She tried tried to follow the man, but he left. She followed him out of the ballroom and suddenly she was in a long hallway, doors as far as she could see in either direction. He disappeared into a door. She said, you left Abby, then went after him. Suddenly, she heard the same thing echo behind her. You left Abby. She turned around, and there's Abby, standing with a snake around her her feet. And Vicky woke up. (sighs) The very, very last thing. Oh, also, uh, Dr. Neil Bachman. Sorry, we haven't talked about Dr. Neil Bachman. He is waiting for a key to a safe deposit box he has no memory of having, but apparently the bank thinks he has one. Box 3033, Chemical Bank on the Upper East Side. He's waiting for that. But in the meantime, he thinks his talents are wasted digging through evidence in this woman's apartment. He wants to go to the Mercury Art Gallery where she had a showing. This is more his speed. He might know someone there and maybe he can get some information. So he's going to dig into that. Uh, also, Skid and I talked about this on Cannon Fodder, I think. Uh, your friend Fran, uh, you haven't talked to her in a, in a couple days, and we saw her on day one, and she was pissed at you for not reading her article uh, that she had. Uh, she got published in Vanity Fair. Yeah. And I think, oh, oh and sorry, and then the very, very last thing is, is Roger. As he's sifting through pages and pages of this random play, he finds a page... And if I can do it, if I didn't screw it up, I'll take you back to the Roll Twan Zoni. Uh, he finds a page of a play with a character with a name that tickles at the back of his mind for a reason he can't quite explain. There's a character named Dr. Westover. And with that, I'll take you back to roll 20 if you just want to look over kind of the evidence. A lot of the things we've talked about here, I actually threw a picture of Cynthia Lachance up there. Uh, she's the woman at the building manager's office. The receipt is there. The United Airlines ticket. 
a police report. <clears throat> the stationery from Hotel Broadalbin or Broadalbin, we don't know how to pronounce it, of which Roger looked up in the New York pa- or in the um, what you call it, the uh, yellow pages. There's no listing for a hotel under that name in New York. And there's this page of a play with a character named Doctor Westover who apparently is talking to someone named Richard. And at the end of that scene, Dr. Westover in, a, in an all white medical examination room, it appears, says, that's strange. Where's my pen? The door to the room opens, enter Barbus. Barbus says, what's going on here? <laughs> end of scene, we don't know. We don't have the next page. We only have one loose random page. <laughs> That's my that's my synopsis, I guess, for where we are. Now there's a that lot, was, a lot of irons in the fire. That was uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys are, uh, are 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 on pace. So here's my understanding: Roger is in the apartment. Vicky is in the apartment. It is late morning, almost noon. Uh, Neil is on his way to the uh, Mercury Art Gallery, and Bobby. You know what? Bobby is where we'll open the show right after. I do a giveaway. That's right! Oh. I'm doing a giveaway! Oh. Well, I'm not doing it. Arc Dream's doing it. Arc Dream Publishing! They're amazing. They've got great stuff coming. We actually have a couple uh, giveaways coming in the next few weeks. But for this one, we're going to go back to the basics. And we're just going to flat out give away a physical copy of the Agent's Handbook tonight. Anybody who wants to get started in Delta Green, wants that Agent's Handbook to uh, to get into a game, start running a game, whatever you whatever you please, uh, Arc Dream is going to give away one tonight. So take a look in chat. Brennan will drop a link in chat to uh, the giveaway. Click on it there and follow the instructions. Get your name in there. And before the end of the stream tonight, he will announce a winner in chat. So keep an eye on that. And uh, very excited to give that book away. I'm also excited to announce, stay tuned in the coming weeks because we're going to give away a copy of a book that isn't even out yet called Iconoclasts. We'll get back to that later. More, more details on that later. Cash value. Ten thousand dollars, <laughs> and we're just giving it away. Are we crazy, away. Troy? Are we crazy? crazy. <laughs> we're gonna be crazy. <laughs> we, we How many of these we got back mind. here? <laughs> <laughs> it's late. We're having a lot of fun. Okay, <laughs> we're having a good time. We're having a good time. We come in on Bobby. He's standing at the desk in front of Cynthia Lachance looking at a photocopy, a Xerox, as we might call it, of a ledger. There's something else I didn't mention before that sort of stands out to you. In the building, none of the current tenants have paid their rent in months, but also there's a whole lot of blank lines. There's five total tenants in the building, including Abigail Wright, and you could tell just based on the layout and the ledger lines that there's a dozen apartments. There's only five tenants. Also seems rather odd. That is crazy. Okay, so am I still, I'm still with Cynthia. I can ask her what's- Absolutely, what the absolutely. Okay, so Cynthia, um, I'm only seeing five tenants here yet you've got 12 uh, apartments in this building what's wh- wh- what's the deal wh- why is this building empty oh well management hasn't been motivated to fill those units um, over the last year or so because they are they're hoping to do some renovations so they they haven't uh, filled those those units just yet Okay, so why, okay, why is there no payment for the other residents? Why have they not been paying their rent? I don't know. It's very strange. The, I don't know. I sent notices to everyone and I didn't get a response. I went to the building and I knocked on some doors and no one answered. I'm not really sure why they're not paying, but like I said, and she looks around uncomfortably, like I said, and lowers her voice, 
the management company hasn't been terribly motivated to chase these rents because they're trying to remodel the building. So in another 30 days or so, we're going to be able to process evictions at a pretty quick rate. I'm not very comfortable with it. I've never evicted an entire building before, but forever, for whatever reason, this is just landing right into their lap. And, um, <clears throat> the management company, is it also the company that owns the building or is there a separate owner? No, no, it's, it's art life. It's art life. They just, they feel like the building needs, um, it needs updating. They probably would have done it sooner, especially in Abigail's case, because she hadn't paid rent for so long, but they've had their own issues with this building. I mean, they, they are having all kinds of difficulties from what I understand. It's, it's not something they really talked to me about, but I overheard them saying that they're, they're just having difficulties down at city hall with the, the, the records for the building, uh, that there may be some sort of, I'm not sure, um, uh, historic, uh, preservation thing happening with the building or something like that, but that's all kind of done down at city hall. That's not really the information that I have here, but apparently the building is, um, it's going to be tough to renovate legally. So they're working on that. Uh, once that comes through though, I think those evictions will be processed quick. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, one last thing. Uh, is there uh, a contact for the manage management uh, of the building, or is there somebody I can talk to that can ask some more questions about that? Not really. That that's me. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm your contact for that. I can I can give you all the information I can. I, I think if you if you have more questions about the building, you could go to City Hall. Uh, they have you know the 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 land records on the building since its inception for. I would imagine. I mean, that's what they do here in the city. So, gotcha, gotcha. Cynthia, thank you so much for your help. Is it okay if I call you if I have more questions? I can, I can ask you about the building. She gives you a smile. Absolutely. Oh, mm. you're a doll. Thank you. <laughs> Give a little wink. Do I? Do I see sparks? Love uh, connection. By the way, I'd like to mention. Uh, this handsome man she's looking at. We've got some artwork now. Yes! We have some actual <laughs> artwork! Jesus no Lord. way. Hold on. Pre prep the artwork, Ian. Uh, let's get it ready. I'm going to throw up oh, some for you guys prepping. here. Uh, let, let's show everybody our new, our new artwork of Bobby Walford. You should see him. There he is. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Shut oh up. Oh, my God. Look at just, this <laughs> devil. This Man, no wonder she's Masters. sitting on him. That's amazing. <laughs> and and the, the, the glasses pose. That's, yeah, exactly. That's the like, you know, right he now. looked at the ledger, but then this is just after he took them down and said, can I call you if I have any other questions? <laughs> little, little wake in there. There's a little wake coming in there. <laughs> Oh, wow. God, that's awesome. Cool, oh, that is great. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, I got to be honest. That, it's one of the things that makes me happiest with turning our scary. RPG games into a business is like getting to get our characters drawn by amazing illustrators. Oh, yeah. It's Seriously. great. I just, I treasure I all wall. of them. It's so cool <laughs> to have that collection of just really beautifully done realizations of your characters. It's so great. Yeah. Uh, I so uh, I literally want that for my wall. <laughs> you got it, buddy. I will. I'll send it to you. Uh, all right, let's fade out from there as Bobby leaves. One last thing, Bobby. Where are you headed? Yeah, um, I'm gonna head back. Well, I I, I think I want to head back to the apartment first, uh, and then share this info about City Hall because there might be something there that might help explain what else is going on here but i'm gonna head back to the apartment first and reconvene okay with team. bobby walks out and we'll fade out of that scene let's fade into the apartment roger comstone is looking at this page of a play what's going through his head he sees the name westover and there's just this 
I think you even said it, this like tickle at the back of his brain where something seems familiar. Maybe it's just a glitch in the matrix type situation where it seems like deja vu, but it's just similar to something. He's not quite sure. And he's been experiencing this now for the past week and he's keeping it to himself. Even things he's finding in the apartment, like the radio, he's keeping to himself because he doesn't know what's... He's having trouble, like, grasping what's actually real in front of him and what is a part of his uh, sort of deteriorating mind. So This is... uh, You are describing losing sanity. Yeah. Point. You know what I mean? That's what Uh, you're describing. It's exactly that. It's, yeah. it's not really knowing what is real and what isn't. I don't know if it's like he's embarrassed or he just doesn't want to verbalize it because then it'll seem real, um, which is probably there's it's those emotions are tied up in each other. Um, so he puts the papers down and uh, he looks over at you said Vicky's there. Yeah. You look over and we see Vicky is moving through evidence and just we see we hear the the polaroid being snapped uh, again just tirelessly cataloging a workhorse vicky R- ricci and he says uh you ever seen the uh the movie rosemary's baby mm. is that the one where her head spins around backwards <laughs> No, 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 that's, that's The Exorcist. Oh. It's a completely different movie. <laughs> are you, sh- are you sh- sure? Because I think, isn't it Rosemary's Baby, it's about a baby, no? Sure. Okay, whether I've seen it or not, what? <laughs> Well, it's this, it's hard to explain, but uh, there's this guy, John Cassavetes plays him, and he's this actor, and he basically sells his soul to the devil to have a career. But he doesn't really sell his soul, he sells his wife's body for the devil to impregnate her. You've never seen Rosemary's Baby? <laughs> It's like kind of ringing a bell. Um, Mia Farrow, Roman oh, Polanski. Oh, I love Mia Farrow. Oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. I Name mean, I, three Mia Farrow movies. <laughs> look at my hair. Obviously, I styled it after Mia Farrow, so don't even come out. I don't see many movies is what I'm trying to say, okay? I know who <laughs> Mia Farrow is. I don't have time, and I don't like going to the theaters because they're dirty. And it's like, I don't know who sat in that seat. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You couldn't name one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I know one. (laughs) Rosemary's baby. And she continues (laughs) sifting through papers. (laughs) He just keeps looking at her like, not bad. (laughs) (laughs) He smiles, puts the cigarette in his mouth. Well, the reason I, the reason I bring it up is, uh, there's this whole thing about the building that they live in. There's this like cult and uh, it's a whole thing, but the, the, the room of one of the buildings is like connected to another room where they bring it down for the satanic ritual and then they can all walk through the closet to get to a... The point is, it's something about the building where everyone's in on it. I was walking around these floors, trying to hear if there was a fucking dog somewhere, because one of these scripts mentioned a dog barking. Now, I didn't hear a dog, and I lost my shoe, and I hurt my foot. (laughs) I remember that. But I also didn't hear any people. We should go knock on some of these doors and see what the neighbor's situation is. And I'll tell you why. 
Maybe I'm crazy. I don't think anyone else lives here. That's actually a good idea. I will give it to you. Um, I have all of the, the witness reports that I've sifted through, all of the police reports, and nothing is out of the ordinary. So much so that it's odd that nothing is out of the ordinary. Normally there's, you know, tenant disputes, somebody's got a problem with somebody. There's nothing in the reports about this woman. I mean, if somebody's got a dog in the building, Somebody hates that dog. So why don't we just go fucking knock? Yeah, why don't we just go fucking knock? Get hurt. See what we see. Yeah, okay. You hear the buzzer to the apartment. You expecting anybody? Um, only, I mean, there was, no, hold on. And she runs to the window. And you see Bobby Walford outside. Oh it's uh, it's it's uh, not uh, not nightshade. It's makeshift, makeshift, makeshift. makeshift. <laughs> it's make- night- <laughs> nightshade. Nightshade. nightshade is a good one too. It's I'm an old, put that in my back pocket for old another one. Nightshade. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Encel. Cheyenne, oh, Wyoming. Asian. I have Chocolate Wyoming. mousse. I have flashbacks. Chocolate mousse. Night shade. Chocolate. <laughs> Private night shade. Get over here. No. <laughs> 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 oh man, I don't know if it's on stream, but for me, Francis's screen is frozen in the most horrifying. Uh, Did anybody see that? It was just like a no. monster. It looked like the face. cover to the movie Altered States. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> That's how I laugh. Yeah, normally. your mouth was about half the screen. <laughs> when I was a kid, I had a nightmare about that poster. I had yeah. never seen uh, the movie, and I had one of the States. worst nightmares of my childhood about that poster. Yeah. That was frightening. Also, I want to point out, because Troy will give me shit for the rest of my life. I, Sydney, have seen Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Don't get her confused with Kate Stamis. <laughs> Sydney has seen many well, You're movies. a hell of an actress, because I thought you hadn't seen anything. By the, <laughs> <laughs> the scene where, when all the neighbors are in the apartment, though, crowding around, great scene. So oh, creepy. Yeah. It's oh, phenomenal. God, creepy. So creepy. So creepy. And you're yeah, onto I, something though I, I think it's like it might be worth this might be a few steps ahead but just like looking at the the blueprints of the building to see if there are any unaccounted for spaces or something what did we say we That's literally totally... talked about this yeah you know, I'm metagaming a little bit based on like the information Francis just received but right. I think in like terms of story wise it would be fun yeah. to have this moment come on top of what Francis just yeah. discovered yeah because when yeah. you said exactly. Rosemary's Baby that was it was like oh yeah maybe I'm just thinking about that closet that leads mm-hmm. in and yeah, then yeah, something yeah. about them all the the play has them all talking together it, it just feels like there's some sort of culty and also yeah. metagaming because we don't know this yet from Agent Makeshift but they all possibly disappeared at the same time and right. have not been paying their rent so yeah they're all in the fucking basement you know coalescing <laughs> Like some some giant. No, no, like, his skin's going. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, it was just it was this Twin Peaks type moment. Like I oh I didn't hear a dog and I was bummed out about that. Yeah. But then I realized I didn't hear anyone. Mm-hmm. You know I was just listening for the dog, but I didn't hear anyone. So like we should we should go not. But let's let yeah. let's let Nightshade I, in. I, I <laughs> says that it's <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, <laughs> the night. Working on the uh, night shift. Inside. <laughs> <laughs> Working on the night shift. Working on the night shift. Sorry. Uh, um, it's makeshift. Okay, I'll pull it back. And yes. ooh, he's got three coffees. Perfect. Oh, it's yes. He's buzzes. bringing a key on the eye. It's getting late. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's the energy I need That's for the next stage. <laughs> it's disgusting. almost 10 p.m. I need some key lime pie. You, like you're disgusting. Key lime pie. It's almost 1 but p.m. Really... and you want a key lime pie? That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Correct. Coffee's all in. around. Here we go. Coffee's all around. Uh, I found some information, gang. Um, we need to find out more about this building. Apparently, nobody's been living here. Uh, the tenants that were living here, there was only five of them out of this whole 12 apartment building. They haven't paid rent in months. So Because you can't pay when you don't live here. 
Make he something was, weird. He was literally just saying that before you walked in. Now that's weird. That's yes. weird. What's more weird is there's something about the history of this building that we need to dig into. I we need to head down to City Hall. Find yes, out. A question. Have you ever seen Rosemary's Baby? <laughs> Great movie. Rose Lansky classic. Oh. Why? I think there's a Rosemary's Baby situation going on here. Remember the hotel in the movie? It's called the, the Branford, based on the Dakota, right over here on Central Park West. I think this is a Branford, Dakota type situation. So Maybelline and I, we're about to just go knocking on some doors to see what we find. And between you and me, if nobody answered, we're breaking in. <laughs> we, we can we can just kick the door down. We are all FBI agents. We, we can go in. You can. I mean, if you just want to do law enforcement proper law enforcement. You gotta have a warrant to just kick a door down of a private residence. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, I could get a warrant so oh. fast, it'll make your heart skip a beat. All right. Um, Good luck with that. Can I... Do, do <laughs> I... I know have the I, DA. Have I, I'm calling the DA. Have I shared... Have I shared with... Nobody knows which organization I work for, or are, are no. we... Have I shared... No. Okay. So... Roger knows. <laughs> what? Maybe we don't need to kick down a door. Maybe we can just pick a lock. I got some uh, lock picking skills. One way or another, we're getting in. Let's go knocking. Let's try knocking. Let's just try knocking before. Yeah, and uh, Vicky wouldn't suggest totally breaking the law, but she is weirded out now. That th These are very good points. She's getting a little weirded out. Yeah. Is your plan to knock on the first door you see? To just walk uh, down the hallway and knock on a door? No, we're going to knock on no. the apartment above this one. Okay. Bobby, are you going with them or are you splitting the, off to City Hall? Well, I think I know I, I want to see what's happening first. I want to check check the room, the apartment out. So I'm going to go with them. Yeah. Okay. You, the three of you exit Abigail's apartment and we see you walking down the hallway towards the stairs. <clears throat> that lead to the second floor. And on that, we'll cut away. We go back outside. Uh, actually, no, we don't go outside. We go inside. We go inside an um, art gallery. Uh, we'll go inside an art gallery. And uh, inside, uh, you know, we just see the typical inside of a painting kind of art gallery. There's a couple little sculptures around, a couple little paintings. And uh, there is a jingle jangle sound of bells as a, a door opens. And walking in is Dr. Neil Bachman. I want to show everybody what Dr. Neil Bachman looks like. I think this is a good time to show a little Dr. Neil Bachman artwork. Let's, let's cue up that artwork and share it with everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Neil Bachman. It's just phenomenal. <laughs> it is oh just so amazing! Oh, uh, uh, such <laughs> solid Rick Ocasek I vibes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So cool. oh. It's so perfect. I'm so, oh, God. It's, the it's so great. The the earring, the single <laughs> jade <laughs> earring. Are you Let kidding? the good times roll. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good times roll. <laughs> good times roll. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> Living oh, in Don't do do crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, Skid, I have, to, the the I have to ask is Dr. Neil Bachman wearing transition lenses that change into sunglasses? Uh, yes, he always does. Yes. Of course. Perfect. Yeah. It's just, it's just so perfect. So well done. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh. It. it makes me so happy. Uh, we see uh, Dr. Bachman walk into this gallery and walking out from behind a desk and approaching him is a tall, slender gentleman in a nice suit, uh, some glasses of his own, uh, some black rimmed small glasses of his own. 
And uh, as he walks up, he just says, welcome to the Mercury Art Gallery. How can I, oh my goodness. <laughs> I know you. I know you. Don't wait. Don't tell me. Bachman. Dr. Yes. Bachman is the, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, we met, oh, when was it? Two years ago. You don't remember my name, do you? I can tell. I can tell looking at your face. I have a horrible memory for names. I have a great memory for faces. I certainly remember your face, but I can't place the name. That is okay. It's Santiago. I'm so glad you remember my face. Santiago. We met, yes, we I met knew, in... I knew it was a Latin American capital mm. city, but I couldn't remember which one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, you had the list narrowed, didn't you, already? I, I knew. <laughs> we were at, oh, please, I faces I'm great with. Come on, I know. I know. Giles. It was Giles Prince. Uh, the, the 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 Tribeca Film Festival, right? Oh, you had a yes. film. Aren't you a filmmaker? Is that yes. you a filmmaker? Yes. Well, I I dabble, I suppose. I knew it. I knew it. Doctor Bachman, what brings you into uh, just our Neil. little gallery I, here? Just just Neil is fine. Um, oh, okay. It's uh, well, I I just it's funny. I'm trying to track someone down, and I swear. She had a showing here in this gallery not too long ago. It was Abigail something. Um, God, do you know who I'm talking about? Abigail. Um, I may know a few. Wait, please tell me you're not talking about Abigail Wright. Yes, that was at Abigail Wright. You're also looking for Abigail Wright? Well, I'm well, always get in looking line. for Miss Wright, oh. but in this case, I'm looking for Abigail Wright. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I can imagine you are. <sighs> Don't even get me started. We're going to have to come inside. Come inside. Are you thirsty? Do you want a, do you want a Perrier or a, a, oh, a, kill for a, a Perrier. white wine? Yeah, white Pellegrino, wine. actually, if you have it. But yeah. Pellegrino. Jade! Jade, honey! <laughs> Two Perrier or Peregrino? I'm sorry. Uh, Pellegrino. Per two Pellegrinos, please. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> uh, Abigail Wright. Okay. So, she had a, a wonderful showing. Here. Wonderful, talented young artist. November last year, she came in. She uh, brought a, a, a large series of paintings. Sold all but three, if memory serves. I think that that's right. I'm pretty good. I don't even need to go back and look in my books. She had such a killer evening, and she was flying so high. I mean, she made so much money, for, especially for a young artist in New York. And shortly after, I will admit, I hounded her a bit. I said, you have to come back. We, we, we have to do another one. And I know it can be intimidating for some young artists to follow up a performance like that, and maybe she was getting some cold feet, but then suddenly, out of the blue, she calls me, and she she's just enraptured with this new idea that that she was ready for another showing and uh and that my my constant requests of her were, were about to be fulfilled and uh and i was so looking forward to it as i said she sold all but three of her original paintings and those three were left here she said just you know sell them when you can when there's time and uh and if they go you know honor system uh, I'll take my cut. And I did sell two of them, uh, if memory serves. One is still here downstairs, I'm sure. Oh, th there she is. The wonderful Jade, my assistant. And this woman <laughs> walks up and with two Pellegrinos uh, and hands you one. And then he takes a seat and, and offers you a seat. And it's just like a small, kind of like almost like a folding chair. It's not like a fancy chair or anything. Uh, so he sits down takes a sip, sets down the water, uh, and says, so, as I was saying, she was all set to come back. She told me that she had found a play, uh, a play that was turn of the century, some, some old, uh, I don't know, 19th century play or something that was, uh, had been long forgotten. 
uh, that no one knew about, and she found it in some old bookshop in Alphabet City or something like that, and she wanted to do this companion sort of showing, this gallery showing of uh, paintings that would go along with this pl- with this play, hopefully remind people of its brilliance, and we were talking dates, Dr. Bachman. Dates! I had her in my books. <laughs> and one day, she just doesn't return my call. And then the next week, and then the next week, and then her date comes and goes. I had to cancel everything. It was horribly embarrassing. Picks up his drink. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> so <laughs> Abigail Wright is on my shit list. And if you're looking for her for a movie or something, I'd say go looking elsewhere. There's plenty of artists out there that aren't as flaky as Miss Wright. Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. I, I couldn't deal with anything like that on the set right now. My head is just all over the place. I'm redecorating. I remembered this show. I remembered her pieces being just exactly the kind of look that I wanted. Mm. And I just wanted to commission something from her. Two things. Um, first of all, uh, do, would you have any pulls out like a little uh, notebook? A little, little nether, like moleskin, like a <laughs> notebook. And uh, it's got a Mont Blanc pen. Pulls it out. <laughs> so, could you? Do you happen to remember the name of the play that she was inspired by? No, she wouldn't tell me. She, she, she wouldn't say. Yeah, I even asked, and she was like, "You have to wait. You have to wait." Uh, she didn't give me the title. I was to presume she didn't want me going looking for it, advertising it in any way. I don't know. Uh, who can know the mind of an artist? Am I right? Artists. Artists. Second thing. <laughs> uh, could I? Take a look at this piece, the one old unsold piece. I want to see. It may fit what I'm looking for. Absolutely. I might not have to Absolutely. find her at all. It's one of those pieces. You know, I think some artists. Jade! <laughs> Jade! <laughs> she comes up. <laughs> she, could you go downstairs? <laughs> you know that piece? The New Yorky Park piece that Abigail Wright that we've never saw. Yes, yes. Bring that up for Dr. Bachman. He'd like to take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> he turns back to I'm talking to Bronson Pinchot. And everyone else <laughs> he turns back to you. She, I think a lot of artists, uh, when they're young especially, try to just sell pieces, right? Instead of just doing their art, they try to throw a few things in there that they think will just sell. Uh, particularly to people without much taste. People that maybe mm. just want a New Yorky kind of scene. The uh, bridge and tunnel crowd. The bridge and tunnel crowd. Those that move into the city and want to say, I'm from New York, even though it's bullshit. And they buy these paintings and put them up and they're very New York. This one was, oh, here she is. And she walks out with this canvas it's you just seen kind of the side of it mm-hmm. and as she turns it to face you he's still talking uh, as you can see it's just a classic sort of uh, summer day at Washington Square Park your representation she turns this fucking thing in your face and mm-hmm. it is the park the arch People all around. People <laughs> fucking dancing. <laughs> As you look closer. No. Don't say it. Oh, no. You see a small clown. Shut oh, God. Come on. No. Oh, no. Dancing. Dancing. <gasps> Trailing some sort on the painting, it's a simple smudge, a vanilla rose sludge, of like a a wisp of this thing that it is curving into the air. The the clown. You haven't seen this clown, Doctor Bachman, but it does for some reason stand out to you. What do you think? Do you think it's the kind of thing you could use for your film? I would, honestly, I would love to unload it. I'd give you a great prize. (laughs) You're hearing this voice in the background as it's getting dimmer and dimmer. And that's when you see beyond the fountain in the back, right near a monument, a small monument in the distance. You see a park bench 
and five figures huddled together. Each one huddled in purpose, though they are simply but brushstrokes. Identity's hard to pick out, but it's also hard to deny that it looks exactly like your meeting with Agent Marcus. (laughs) What? Give me a sanity roll, please. (laughs) Okay. All right. Uh, 15 under higher whatever (laughs) under higher yeah you take no sanity damage um so are you interested and he's like he's genuinely he's thrown by this as he comes to this realization sweat is like beating on his upper lip much as it's beating on mine (laughs) (laughs) He like, takes a drag off of his cigarette. I have like prop cigarettes and stuff too that I ordered. I forgot to bring with me. Oh, just, beautiful. Like, Can't wait. I have, this whole, I have all this costume stuff. You'll see it probably in a couple weeks. <laughs> I think once you saw that, that artwork, you're like, here we go. Ready yeah. to rock. <laughs> oh yeah, it totally was. Like get this, the black and white version of the artwork. It's like, yes. Uh, so he takes a, takes a, a steadying drag off of his, off of his uh, cigarette. So it's a, yeah, um, uh, how much you want for this? Um, let's say 150. That is half the price that I was offering just a month ago. Yeah, okay. Just to keep it out of the hands from anyone from Long Island, if you know. <laughs> and just to get it out of here, I can't even tell you how many people we showed it to that not only would they not buy it, but they, they said they wanted it out of their face immediately. I don't know, something bothered them about it. Yeah, and I think there is something about it as like disturbing as the implications of it are. I think that he is also drawn to it in his like weirdo kind of filmmaker way. Uh, his his attaches his fascination with the, the surreal. And so, yeah, so he, he pulls out his checkbook. And he starts in a shaky hand. He starts writing a check. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so glad that we could help in, in some small way. I, I still have her number if you'd like to try to reach her. But I, like I said, she stopped calling me back and I'm done with her. Done. Yeah. I haven't tried in months. Yeah. I mean, if, I, if it's no trouble, I'd love to. I'd still love to talk to her. I'd still have other empty walls that need filling absolutely absolutely jade and jade's like right there right next to me oh i'm sorry could you get the uh, the book you know with all their names and she and he gets you um abigail's number phone number any threes in it uh no there are actually no threes in it mm, curious it is a 212 number oh fancy all right fans copies that fancy. down Thank you, Santiago. I shan't forget your name again. Wonderful. We would love to have you back anytime. And if you ever want to have a screening here, please, by all means. I'm, I've, I've just been, I've just been, and he's like distractedly trying to make the place look cleaner. I've been trying to, look, we don't only do paintings here. We don't only do sculptures. We could do a, we could do a screening here if you'd like. I could, I have a chair rental place I've used before. They're amazing. I could get this whole place filled for you. I, I fill the place with wine and cheese and uh, you could do a talk back. It would be amazing. Sure. I mean, if the Ziegfeld's booked. I guess that could work. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. I understand. Did you, you wrap know. this for me? I don't want other people seeing it that haven't paid anything. Absolutely, Doctor Bachman, and he can tell he's been fobbed off. Like, uh, and he he stands up and uh, dejectedly walks over and starts wrapping uh, this piece for you, and uh, and hands it off. We'd love to have you back. Oh, you'll see me again. Wonderful. Adios. Ciao. Ciao. Bye, Jade. And he leaves. <laughs> and he starts... Wa- and, and now it's like... He's kind of like put on a brave face to kind of not betray anything as he was finishing that. But now like now that he's out on the street, like his heart starts racing. And he's, and he's got this painting, like he's holding it by the frame, like next to him, just thinking about what's on it. Just like sort of walking down the street, almost in a haze. 
<laughs> and he's walking and he walks for a couple of blocks. He's like heading for the train uh, to meet up with the rest of the gang up at this apartment, I guess. And then he remembers that he sort of snaps out of his reverie and remembers that he promised Fran that he would read her article in Vanity Fair. And he still hasn't. After, like, as he passes a, a newsstand. So he's just like, oh, right. And he, like, turns around and, like, finds the latest copy of Vanity Fair, buys it, and uh, tucks it under his arm. Can gets I, on the subway. Uh, can I show it to you? Yeah. Yeah, he opens it up on the subway to read it. Well, I'll show you uh, the latest copy of Vanity Fair that you see at the newsstand. If you'd go to roll 20, uh, we'll just throw it up on the evidence board. Maybe it is evidence, but oh. there's oh. what you see at the newsstand. <laughs> wow. What a hot young actor. I, 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 it looks like he has a bright future ahead of him. Who is this guy? <laughs> Who is this stud? It is uh, Keanu Reeves graces the cover of Vanity Fair in August of 1995. Uh, Yeah, so you see him sitting on a motorcycle with his smoking... What is it? No, what's the word I'm looking for? He's got the come hither stare. Yeah, the come (laughs) hither stare. It's just... Smoldering, smoldering gaze. Smoldering, exactly. Keanu Reeves on Sex Hollywood and Life on the Run. And uh, you pick that up at a newsstand and then enter the subway. As you get into the subway, you start flipping through looking for your friend's article. And I'll throw it up there as well. Uh, This one is a little long. It is a bit chunky as far as uh, handouts go. But take a look at that. I'll start kind of reading it for our audio audience. Uh, If we can get somewhat close on this, that would be amazing for the stream. But it is it's a real article in Vanity Fair. Um, On the picture is a youngish woman. Uh, and the uh, the summary is last month the controversial Van Fitz Foundation made a return with its charity gala four years after its founder and suspected fraudster Algernon Van Fitz goes missing off the coast of Bermuda we ask quote the other Van Fitz girl unquote about her father's influence and legacy you would immediately recognize this name as one of the tenants in the building (laughs) Michelle Van Fitz the first line you read open the door to Michelle Van Fitz's modest Manhattan apartment apartment and you'd be forgiven for taking her uh, as just another of the rising class of young female artists in NYC as soon as you see that name I need you to roll a sanity check oh no Uh, 32 under 50 something. You continue reading. Van Fitz is not a people person, perhaps the only trait she has in common with her presumed late father. Mm. Quote, if you could make a flesh golem representing the patriarchy, it would look like Alfie Fitzgibbon. Unquote. Sitting in her modest library, she clutches a steaming cup of green sentia tea. By the time the noted feminist writer and poet graduate, uh, had graduated from NYU, she was already estranged from her troubled father. Quote, like all tyrants, his maniacal need to control has fed my creativity. So, of course, he couldn't help but take credit for the work of a woman he, quote, created, unquote. We discuss her disdain for the event, this, this big Van Fitch charity event chastising it less for its part in Van Fitz Sr.'s suspected fraud and more for its preference of young white male artists. Quote, if you can even call them that. Spatter fluids onto a canvas with a bristled phallus and suddenly you get access to a grant and contacts. Unquote. She speaks with a cold detachment, belying the warmth and empathy of her writing. She touches on the subject as we talk. Quote, I find comfort in the written word. People are difficult. You can write that if you like. I won't read the article, unquote. And I believe it. The apartment is devoid of newspapers or TV or radio. Michelle's brusque tone and short answers indicate she does not care for company of any kind. 
A final question, though. What's next for Michelle Van Fitz? Quote, I'm working on an interpretation of a fascinating play from the turn of the century. Its themes are remarkably progressive in regard to women. No wonder it's been left unacknowledged for so long, unquote. As we walk through the door, she stops a moment near a bookshelf, then presses a small red text into my hand. Quote, it's very insightful, unquote. I, however, will await the remarkable Miss Van Fitz's interpretation. Oh, my God. And the byline it- says, by Francis Harris Bernstein, <laughs> August 1995. Jesus Christ. Is it the king in yellow? Is that the play? <laughs> What? Oh, you got to get the play from France. You got to yeah, get, get it from France. Get it from France. So he immediately next stop when he gets off the train and reroutes <laughs> to Fran's apartment or could to Vanity imagine, Fair. She's probably at work. She's, could she, you imagine Vanity Fair. if Neil never read his friend's article? Uh, yeah. where it's like the classic <laughs> thing of like you've got to read my article. Like I finally got published, and you're like, I'll oh, get around to it oh my God. eventually. I'm so glad I actually read it. <laughs> but Wait, do, what I, but do, do you know anything about this? Does Does Neil know anything about the uh, the King in Yellow? Um, I he actually he he might know. He might have heard of it. Uh, just because of his like brief exposure to the the unknown and just his general kind of fascination with that kind of weirdness yeah he might have heard of it well at the very least it is a tenant in the building and your friend wrote about her and you say you are now going to immediately divert to go to fran yep okay you get off your subway train and we fade out from there (laughs) 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 God. This is messing me up. But whatever this article is is insane, but I'm sure it's not nearly as disturbing as the feature on Waterworld, which is also mentioned in the cover. <laughs> in depth. There's a lot to dig into about Waterworld. <laughs> we come back to the apartment and let's just say we focus in on a solid door. Uh and a and a hand comes into view. Bum, 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 bum. Who's knocking on the door? I assumed it was Cumstone, but... Yeah. I like want to. Knock. That's <laughs> Agent Messiah like a Cumstone knock. to you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Messiah. Messiah. Standing at the door, <laughs> knocking, boom, 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 boom. we see Agent Messiah. We slowly turn. Let's look a little Roger Cumstone artwork. Uh... <gasps> Reveal the man oh himself. God. There's been many uh, interpretations of Roger Cumstone, but I think this is my favorite. There he is, young Cumstone. Oh my God! Oh my God. Oh my God. Look in the mirror. <laughs> like looking in the mirror. Oh like my God! The <laughs> Those broad Holy shoulders shit. make me think of Troy Lavalley. Yep. Yeah, there he is. He looks, looks like a live GI Joe, like yeah. straight up, like, just like a full on flesh GI Joe. It's just. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <about. laughs> The cosplay has been on point. I mean, he's oh, yeah. wearing yeah. aviators and he's got a cigarette totally. dangling out of his mouth. But that's yep. why I love I love this our version of Delta Green because it's we play it like so straight and like every everyone else. But in the middle of this story, there's a Street Fighter character. <laughs> <laughs> no one else is doing that. I love that. It's got like <laughs> Ryu oh. over here. Knock knock knock. Knock knock knock. He looks at Maybelline in makeshift. To click, door turn, doorknob turns. Oh. The door slowly opens, and standing behind it is a young man, late twenties, maybe early thirties. Sandy blonde hair, some of which hangs in his face. He blinks a few times, and says can I help you 
Hi, my name is Agent Ricci. Um, are you... And she's flipping through her notebook where she has written down like the tenant's information that she had gotten from the witness report. And who would this line up with above uh, Abigail's apartment uh, in the report? Uh, above Abigail's apartment in the report, this would line up with Lewis Post. And, and Lewis was in the play that Comstone read, yeah? You saw the name Lewis. Lewis. Um, it, are you Lewis Post or does a Lewis Post live in this apartment? Yes, I'm Lewis Post. He Hi, looks Lewis. around, looks back to back at you like a little frightened. Could we come in for a moment? We are reporting on the um, the ongoing investigation in your building. Um, yes, sure, of course. Um, I'm sorry, and he steps back. He's like, the place is a bit of a mess. Uh, and he opens up the door uh, to let you in. And... Um, you can see the place is uh, it's a bit of a mess um just uh, a little sloppy i mean (laughs) i'm being nice it's a dump uh it is littered with uh like pizza boxes that haven't been thrown out and uh paint containers and uh like looks like art supplies kind of everywhere uh as you start to walk in We'll say, Roger, you turn to the right and look uh, into the kitchen and you see dishes piled in the sink. You see uh, there's a drawer under the sink, near the sink, where uh, it pulls out to gar- a garbage can and it's open. It's in an open position and garbage is like falling out of it. Uh, it's, it's gross. Uh, he brings you in and there's, you know, there is... <sighs> Your alertness, I I would say, Roger, would pick up on the fact that there isn't, though, a smell of, like, disgusting garbage. Like, it just looks like a a really unkempt place. But it it looks like it hasn't been that way that long, maybe. Or it smells like it hasn't been that way that long, maybe, I guess I should say. And you all walk into the apartment, and then he closes the door behind you. So, clink. Um, Mr. Post, do you live alone? I do. And, uh, if you don't mind me asking, um, how are you paid up on your rent? (laughs) You get right right to the point, don't you? (laughs) I, um, I've been a little slow to pay. I just have had, um, a few tough months. Sure. Sure, no judgment here. Um, have you... Uh, are they getting ready to evict you right now? Evict me? I don't have know, you I got, hope not. You haven't gotten any notifications or any uh, calls from the landlord or... No, why? I, I thought that you were the cops or something. You're not... Are you from the building? Just have a few questions to try and uh, get at the... Wait, out of this investigation wait. here. I'm, I'm sorry, what is the investigation and, and who are you? I thought you were the cops. We are with the FBI, so technically we are not the cops. We are FBI agents. Um, oh. Can I ask what your relationship to Abigail Wright is? Uh, uh, Abigail lived downstairs um, and she's... Um, yeah, I, I, I know her in passing. You're an artist? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm a, an illustrator. Wow, not a painter? I see a lot of paints. Well, I've been starting to work on some new things. Uh, charcoals, mainly. Um, I've tried some colors, but it's not really working very well for me. Could I see? I mean, I don't want to interrupt your work, but I'm just curious. I, I love art. Okay. Sure. Um, what are you guys' human scores? I terrible. have a high score. Ten <clears> percent. <throat> I got fifty-one. I have eighty. Eighty. Man, that is fantastic, Vicky Ricci. I would say that you look at this guy and you get the sense that he is 
that he's got a bit of a social disorder uh, ah. in the way that he's communicating with you. He's he's very dodgy about he can't even look at you really, and he's uh, very awkward. But when you mention his art, he does light up a little bit, and uh, he he brings you over uh, to the sort of side room, leaving Roger and Bobby in the main area. Vicky and looks back as she walks over and kind of does like a look around while yeah. I'm over and I here. Slide it and Roger slides into the kitchen when he's not looking. Uh, Bobby's going to go through the living room. Okay. Um, you... Okay. Uh, let me, let's do one thing at a time. Let's do okay. Vicky's look back at Roger because the one person I haven't seen tonight is Vicky Ricci. I want to see the Vicky <sighs> Ricci artwork as oh. she looks back to Roger. Let's take a look at the reach. There she is. There she is. Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> wow. Oh, I think it's the look too. Her, yeah. Yeah. That is the look. That's it's the look like she's a giving. Slight eyebrow, the pursed lips. It's so per she's That's always just amazing. like do what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> it's so oh, yeah. beautiful. She so looks awesome. I love her little jewelry. Oh, I love it. Oh my yeah, God, and what did you call the haircut? The uh, pixie cut. She's got like a pixie twiggy cut. pixie cut, and it's kind of like uh, Mia Farrow in Rosemary's Baby. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> a movie we've all seen. <laughs> there you go, Sid. Absolutely nailed it. Um, and you go alone with him into a bedroom. It, you can tell that this was probably a two-bedroom apartment and that this is not the room he sleeps in, but he uses this room for art. As you walk into this room, you see these canvases stacked up all over, and they're all these charcoal drawings, prints, that seem to have a common theme. One after another, as you look for, through them, you see a man, a man almost posed as if he's posing for the painting, for the drawing, for the sketching, whatever it is, looking right at you. He is dressed in a very old fashioned style, wearing a suit, uh, in some cases a top hat. Uh, when he's not wearing a top hat or a bowler cap, uh, he has, uh, a sort of uh, hair with a you know a part right down the middle and then like greased down kind of in that old fashioned style and he's standing there mostly expressionless and the scenes around it some of them are unfinished some of them are partially finished and uh, in some you see that he is backed up by a room he seems to be in a room and in a lot of these cases, the room, oh man, I feel like I want to make you roll. I'll can roll. You, can you roll, jeez, I don't know if it would be search. I don't think search is right. Let me think about it. And we'll just say uh, that this is kind of an ominous enough scene that you, uh, you see this man and something about the look in his eye bothers you the man that's in these drawings and we'll cut away from you and go into the kitchen. You're looking at these paintings, but we, we, we split into the kitchen and here's agent, uh, Messiah walking around looking through this filthy kitchen. Tell me what you're doing. So he gives an eye to uh makeshift. It's like, Make sure she's all right. And then Make he sure just does. very quickly goes to work here because he knows he doesn't have much time. And so he's just trying to take it all in, like going into his third eye to see anything that's jumping out in this room so that he can quickly then go to another room. Okay. You look through this kitchen and as a part of you see there's kind of trash everywhere dishes piled up in the sink and as part of that process 
you reach down and you grab the handle of the refrigerator. You look back over your shoulder and slowly open it so as to not be heard like digging around in somebody's shit. You open up the fridge and look inside and it looks like a normal uh, fridge filled with normal <laughs> food. That was a total Ghostbusters moment. That's yeah. exactly what I was oh my god. Like, look at all the, look junk, at all food. the junk food. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you actually eat these things? You eat this stuff? <laughs> you, you, uh, you go to close the refrigerator door and Roger stops. Because Roger Comstone isn't just any FBI agent. He's got an alertness through the fucking roof. <laughs> Even with his peripheral vision, perhaps. He's about to close it and you notice small, fine print on the side of a gallon of milk. It says, expired, 3-15-95. The gallon of milk expired March 15th. <laughs> it is currently August 16th. Wait. How much milk milk is in there? It's full. Smell it. March 15th. He starts, like, going through his mind, seeing if March 15th rings a bell. He's seeing, like, newspaper clippings. He's seeing the, the plane ticket. He's seeing the play, words from the play, like, coming through his mind. Is anything March 15th? No. Nothing resonate. Nothing about the date resonates except... Drink that, it. That it was... <laughs> except Dug that it. it was five months ago. Uh, he looks at like a bottle of ketchup. Well, ketchup isn't great. Something else. Uh, a carton of eggs. He looks at a carton of eggs. Expires March 26th. 1995. Hasn't been here since fucking March! And it's full. And we go back. And now we go back. Drink the milk. Drink the milk. We'll go back. We'll let we'll let Troy think for a second about what to do. We'll go back to Bobby. Bobby. Yes. Bobby. Give me a search roll. Oh god, my search is terrible. Okay. Ooh. Oh wait. That's that's a nine. That's a nine yeah. under. Wow, that's a nine under th- forty-two. So Ooh. that works. <laughs> yes. Amazing. <laughs> um, in Especially considering your uh, predilection for uh, uh, paperwork, right? Analysis, finding, right. you know, this kind of stuff. You are about to walk up to reconnect with Vicky Ricci and you turn and look and you see on a side table, a pile of mail. And it's the same mail that you had pulled from Abigail Wright's mailbox in that it is late notice after late notice after late notice of from the electric company and the cable company. And a lot of them with red bars across them, final warning. Final warning. But next to that, you see a, a, an envelope that has been opened. These are all sort of still sealed. You see an envelope that has been opened and laying right on top in a threefold is a letter that has been opened, but the threefold has sort of folded back over. All you would need to do is open it a little bit to see what's in the letter, Agent Walford. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what Bobby does. Bobby's just gonna <laughs> lift that uh, one edge open. See it? Flip it open. You start to open up this letter, looking over your shoulder as Vicky is keeping him occupied in the other room, and you see a letterhead on this from S E M Talent Agency, and 
it says, Dear Mr. Post, and it is a rather brief letter that is a notification of him being dropped from this talent agency that uh, for uh, lack of communication, essentially. And uh, at the end of it, it's signed Mike Severs, agent, SEM management, ta- or SEM S- talent agency. Mike Severs. And the letter, and the letter is dated June 3rd, 1995. Oh, okay. Um, he replaces the letter after or is there anything else on there is there anything else any other no it's a very brief very like you know very quick letter just severing the relationship with lewis post who was clearly represented by this talent agency okay bobby makes note of the names and just uh replaces the letter as if it never got touched as if it was just sitting okay we go back into this room And he says, I've been working on these various interpretations of, well, um, do you know anything about the history of the building? Um, only the recent tenants, they, we didn't really look into the deep history, but I'm, Hmm. I mean, this looks old, no? Yes, it is old. That is because the architect of this incredible building was was working mainly in and he's pulling out these canvases the early 1900s and you see this picture of a man and he's just staring almost blankly at at you this drawing and you can see behind him it it it, it has all of the earmarkings to you of a what looks like a hotel room it's like uh kind of a uh, like a canopied bed and like uh you know the the way that the the door is set and the uh kind of uh, it is a classic sort of like gaudy hotel look and his arms are around two children that are just blank faced clowns and children i can't can't it's all variations of this man in a hotel, sometimes with multiple children, sometimes with no children, sometimes with one child standing right in front of him, both hands on the ch- child's shoulders. Boys, girls, but all young, all like eight years old and younger. Vicky quietly, but very purposefully in the direction of Lewis so that he would hear kind of like feigns like a reaction and under her breath says Hotel Rado Pit? And he comes up and he's like you know about the hotel? I I never saw it in such lively painting. This is beautiful work. This is like reenactment. You're bringing life to this historic uh, I mean uh, you seem to be an expert please tell me more (laughs) well thank thank you very much it's uh, (laughs) the 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 hotel is is only a small part of it I I've never been there myself so I, I don't really know it that well it's kind of how I imagine it but mainly I wanted to try to capture the the brilliance of Mr. Darabandi and if I did maybe I could one day visit the hotel you've never been <laughs> no I've never been oh have you in a dream and for the first time he looks at you yeah, and she, she like takes a moment and kind of again feigns like a romantic sort of like wispy look away and she goes in a dream, but it felt real, if you know what I mean. Really? You see it in your dreams too. 
And she slowly nods and she's under her breath, kind of looking back to her own partners, her own ages. She says, it looked so similar to your paintings. Oh, then you're very lucky. Wait, did, did Abigail get to go? I don't know. I don't think so. Not yet. Couldn't be yet. But she may be close. And we'll cut into the kitchen. Oh! <laughs> oh God, what the f- Get me out of here! Get me out of here! <laughs> Roger, what are you going to do? Roger takes uh, a thing of ketchup and uh, squirts it into his hand. And then he just uh, smashes his hand on the wall and goes, Fuck! Stop! Fuck! <laughs> and then he, he uh, you know, he says that loud enough that it disturbs the conversation that yeah. uh, Maybelline is having. And so does, do they come out? Yeah, Lewis immediately is like, What happened? What happened? He comes yeah. running out of the room. Roger's like, Fuck! Fuck, I just, I turned quick and I smashed my fucking tooth into the wall. Ah! And he pulls out like a little, uh, he, he wadded up a paper towel so that it looks like a tooth. And he's like, my fucking tooth came out. <laughs> yeah, fuck. What? Yeah, do you have any milk that I could put this in? <laughs> do you have any milk? Yeah. yeah, I need some milk to put this in so they can reattach it. Yes, yes. Oh, and he's like, all oh, like freaking out. He's like, ah, oh. shaking. He goes over to the refrigerator, opens up the refrigerator, opens up a drawer, pull, pulls out a glass, pulls out this gallon of milk, opens it up, glug, 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 pours a little milk into the cup, puts the cap on it, puts it back in the fridge, turns it around, and is like, uh, here you go. Does the milk look weird or smell weird? The milk is as fresh a glass of milk as you've ever seen. Okay. What? Roll a sanity check. <laughs> oh my god! What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? Okay. Uh, here we go. Oh no. Oh. Oh no. That's a fail. Uh, Eighty-six. <laughs> He's losing. Oh. It. Eighty-six over He's seventy, uh, over sixty-eight. Yeah, oh, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have had that milk. In that moment, you oh take one point of sanity damage from helplessness. What? How does this manifest for the Raj? Uh, he, <laughs> what he could possibly be more insane than what you just did? He smells it, yeah. and it smells perfectly fine. And he's just like, oh, he smashes. <laughs> The milk on the floor. And just <laughs> slow motion. He goes, What is wrong with that milk? It stinks. <laughs> How old is it? And he just whips open the fridge and grabs the container and he's like, What do you got five month old milk in here for? <laughs> it, 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 is it that old? I just, I just bought it. Roger's Five like month old milk. It's like yeah, and, he, and now Roger's getting sloppy. He, he grabs at the eggs, and he's like, "Are the eggs too?" And eggs are like falling out <laughs> onto the floor. <laughs> You're throwing <laughs> eggs all, all, all over. Okay, what okay. are you doing? You got. You got yes, five sir. month old dairy products in here. What Stop. else is old? And he's just pulling stuff out of the fridge. And the more stuff you pull, uh, there's like cheese. There's uh, uh, the, anything that is like you know uh, uh, perishable that like has an early perishable date. Uh, you can see it's all expired, all of it, and it all looks perfectly fine. And he just goes up to the guy and he like pushes him up against the counter so that he's hey, like hey, his hey, back hey, is bending. Hey. He's like, oh. What's going on here? Well, I, well, I don't know what you're talking well, about, that? man. I, I don't know what you're talking about. P- please don't. Please don't. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything to Abigail. I don't know. She's fine. She's fine. She's she's up on 12. Stop. Just leave me alone. Up on 12. What do you mean up on 12? This building only goes up to the 
whatever fifth or sixth floor. Oh. Well, I mean, well, it only goes up to the fourth floor. You mean, well, third floor? If you, well, there's the ground floor and the first floor and the second. What floor. do you mean and above twelve? Ah! <laughs> <sighs> well, those are, you know. I mean, she's she's seen it. She knows. And he points to Vicky. I mean, those are the floors d- during the day. But, right. You know, at, at nighttime, there's there's more floors. I'm so sorry that he knocked your eggs on the floor. I'll, I'll get you new eggs. He doesn't understand. I'm so sorry. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I know. I know. Agent. Can't you see that he's fine? He did, he can't hurt you. Let him go. What about my tooth? <laughs> Wait, take your t- you dropped your glass on the floor. You're going to find your tooth in all the milk? I'm not putting my tooth in that old milk. <laughs> what do you think, I'm crazy? And then okay, Vic- Vicky, looks, <laughs> Vicky looks at the container, though, because she does think Roger... I mean, Agent Messiah is crazy because she doesn't know what's going on. And she looks at the milk and she does see that everything is expired. And she looks at Bobby and she looks at Lewis and she is very confused. And she is very much ready to roll a sanity check. (laughs) (laughs) But I was so confident and I know about Uh, the hotel and all that uh, stuff. Night. (laughs) Oh. Was the floors during the day. Oh, that's damn it! That's gonna be a sixty-six oh, over no. sixty-five. Uh, critical, uh, critical <laughs> fail. Oh. Critical fail by one point. Yeah. Critical, critical, critical <laughs> fail. Take two points of sanity damage. And how does this manifest in this moment as you go to, you think Roger's crazy. You look at this stuff and it is all five months old and all of it could not be. It's as fresh as the day you bought it. That's what it looks like and smells like to you in every way. How does this manifest for Vicky? I think she really put on a brave face with this guy. Like the guy didn't freak her out, but like the the like intensity that he got about this made up stuff that she was just kind of rolling with did freak her out and now like this shit is now real it's it exists now in reality that this stuff is expired and and five months old and she just like drops the container and and kind of like starts like wringing her hand a little bit and and she's like that 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 doesn't um 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 uh lewis and she's like not really able to use her human skill, which is like her best skill. And she's kind of like losing her charismatic charm and is and is visibly like shaken, which she doesn't normally show. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Bobby steps in just because he's seeing everybody start to fall apart. He hasn't seen the 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 dates right on the thing, right? He's not. He, he doesn't know what's going on. Well, with you know, guys. Vicky okay. saw something and she's cracking yeah. up. Yeah. So. Bobby goes to Lewis. Um, listen, thank you for your time. Um, we are uh, we are going to uh, just take this information that you've given us, and uh, we're going to reconvene. We may need to ask you questions later, though. Is that is that going to be okay if we come back or call at some point with other? Yeah, questions? yeah. I guess that's that's fine. But just ask Abigail; she'll tell you I didn't do anything. Just ask her. Abigail on 12. Yeah, on right. 12. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Post. We, uh, uh, Agent Maybelline, Agent Messiah, we, we can head out and uh, and, uh continue the investigation. <clears throat> Roger's just Sweet. staring at him. And he I'm says, I'm going to grab Roger by the hand. Make sure current grabs him by the hand. He's like, Pulls his hand back. He's like, what happened in March? Wait, where is this? This is in the kitchen. Like, makeshift pulls him off of Lewis so he's no longer, like, towering over him. Oh, but you're still talking to Lewis. Yeah, so he he pulls him back and he just kind of pulls his hand away from makeshift. It's like, what happened in March? In, In March? 
five months ago. What happened? Um. Well. Um. I don't know. I was. Um, March was. I. It, it's. It's. It's hard to remember. I, um. Think. Oh. Um. Well, that was when I first started to to learn about Mr. Darabondi. Yeah, that was March. Um, Mr. Darabondi, the, he, the architect. Yes. The architect. Yes, yes, the architect. Um, that's when I first started to learn about him. It was um, uh, not long after I got um, the uh, when Abigail she gave me the the red book the little red book <laughs> what little red book what was it called the book it it's a it's a some old play it, it's called the king in yellow <laughs> I, I i read it and it's fine but then i started to learn about the building and that's when i started to see mr darabondi and i started to realize the genius of this place and he looks up into the ceiling and we'll see you next time creepy so creepy joe uh, uh, i mean <laughs> The clowns were enough, but you had to throw in the kids. You had to throw in the kids. Uh, the, the kids. kids. The kids. That's sand. dirty. There's something wrong with that's you. That's the scariest. That's the scariest. That's the There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. Oh, my God. Thank you, everybody. Man, next week's going to be insane. Literally. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Goodbye. Bye. Good night. Oh, nice. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up. <laughs> <laughs>